I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get matched down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, our indeed. The child shall lead them. Yes. Next up on our song list tonight is Netherbird, Atrium of the Storm. Atrium of the Storm by the band Netherbird from our DJ Controller of Minds, as you can see up there. Dear listener, if you'd like to be a DJ, it's very, very simple. Uh, four songs. If you get four songs, then you uh, become the DJ. This is at... 5 p.m. or whatever because it's the European stream because yep. our person is a European. Happy winter solstice, says JLB. We're getting right into the next song, which is Atrium of the Storm from the band Another Bird. Let's go.
kind of a sudden end there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. Okay, so instrumentally speaking, this is my favorite (laughs) song of the month. Oh, okay. Just what they did instrumentally, especially the second half of the song, Holy Smokes. Yeah, instrumentally, it was really good. Um... Damn. Lyrically, um, the way they started out was crazy. While the blood of the mountain feeds life anew, which is a brilliant way of talking Mm, about the water, um, water, you know, being the blood of the mountain, which gives life anew, which obviously has certain undertones for us about blood giving life Mm -hmm. to to that. That's just a brilliant way to start off the song. Mm hmm. The infernal beasts are roaming the quest for prey. From freight enigma come wretched void as nights drag us b- back bleak I, I into the I can't remember deep. what enigma means. Like a mystery. Oh. It's like a puzzle you can't solve. Okay. Oh, okay. A frail existence. Now head towards the wind. A speck of light adrift. When all we have awoken is death that brought us life. I loved that whole clip of thing right there. A grain of sand and a crown in the ruins of these hells. What what were you getting? Well, it's not at all what they're trying to say, but I'm a Christian, so I can't see it. When all we have awoken is death that brought us life, I thought of Christ and how his death brought us life and we as Christians, like we have that, that is our story. Like that, that's the center of all that we are. And without that resurrection, you know, Paul said, we're of all people, the most miserable if Christ never rose. Mm -hmm. So when he said, we have all awoken is death that brought us life, a grain of sand. So when he said a grain of sand, there's, um, there's verses that talks about that God's thoughts to us are more in number than the sand on the sea. Uh, So all the sand, all those little grains of sand are, if you compared those to all the good thoughts that God has toward you, there's not even enough grains of sand to even cover all those thoughts. And then obviously a crown. When I think of a crown, I think of Christ and everything that he went through and then him being our king in the, and then in the ruins of these halls, that to me was just the ruins, like destruction, everything, but there used to be halls. There used to be something there. And that, that to me was just the world. Like, there's there's so much chaos and everything in the so that that's what it was to me so but the ruins of the halls the, yeah a great all those things when all we have awoken is death that brought us life a grain of sand a crown in the ruins of these halls like everything like you can see the world in two different ways you can look at it and you can see all the promise you can see life you can see um, births and joy and children and happiness and fun. Or you can see all the misery and there's so much to see on either side and the destruction, like people are capable of such evils and, and, and then there's, there's things that are just like sad for some reason I've been for like the last week or something, I've been really conscious about people that have to live with, um, like well, handicaps in different ways, whether it's mental or physical. But I've been focusing on the physical one and I was reading, I guess it was a show that was called like like Little People, Big World or something like that. And it was um, people who were born with, I, I don't know the appropriate term, dwarfism or they they yeah. were just smaller people. Yeah. And it, it, it follows their life and um, just every the complications that go with that and you know one of them got gets married and well i don't want to give spoilers in case people want to watch it but um you know one of the 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 smaller people marries like a a regular sized person and how that goes and they're having children and and everything that goes along with it but just just how life can like it said these people worked a farm and they didn't allow their their shortcomings or like their their I don't know how to say it without be. I, I don't know what the PC way of saying it is. There, if you're running a farm, it's hard enough to run it if you have your normal height. And when you don't, how much more complications and difficulties and and the difficulties that go along with just just having that as part of your your makeup. So you know, the, but they were fighters and how they were able to to overcome and do all the things that they were able to do. And but you can see, just some things are just like tragic. Or the the people that, you know, could have been saved but weren't because of capitalism. And it's just some things are just terribly tragic. But but there's there's so much beauty in the world. And then there, there's so much unbelievable evil, too. It's just. 
Well, I think that that's when he talks about, you know, that's the controlling verse that or, or line, the atrium in this of the storm. You know, it's it's kind of like that almost bubble where you can get in and escape the, the wilds and the chaos of the elements. And, you know, in pursuit of hearth, which is warmth and shelter from a fate of broken swords, which is... So you've got the elements that you have to deal with. But it's really interesting because it starts off beautifully. We're talking about the blood of the mountain giving life and all the rest of it. But... There is a certain beauty in in the just craziness. Like I was looking at, I don't know if it was Jupiter or Saturn. It was one of these planets with all these storms or whatever. Oh. And it was, you know, a rendition or whatever because there's people that don't believe, you know, whatever. That's fine. But like it was like like the storm and it was crazy. And then the scientists were saying, look, this is this gas and that gas. And like you would be dead in two seconds. Mm -hmm. So like. You're seeing this like amazing wonder, and you're like, "This is beautiful." But if you were in the middle of that shit, you would not be thinking this. I mean, you wouldn't be thinking much of anything. You'd be I dead. was gonna say it, but like, there would be no thoughts. Like, if you could think, you'd be like, "Oh, this sucks to be in the middle of it." But to be able to be inside of the harshness of nature, to be able to observe it while simultaneously be protected with some kind of bubble mm -hmm. uh, where you could have warmth and shelter. And then it says, from a fate of broken swords, mm -hmm. which then goes, it was Jupiter, I think, um, which then goes into human evil. Yeah. Because, you know, the fate of broken swords, if your sword is broken in a battle, presumably uh, you've lost. Mm -hmm. And so, um, y you know, it's like it, fighting, but then that also speaks to a sword also speaks to the, the beauty of human ingenuity. Mm -hmm. how brilliant human beings are that we could figure out, hey, if we did this and added some heat here and did that. And just like nature, you know, the nature itself almost becomes a metaphor for human nature, which is you are capable of making something amazing, um, but simultaneous to that, we're going to turn those swords against each other mm -hmm. and those swords are going to break. Mm -hmm. and, and there's two ways in which a sword breaking is either good or bad. You know, if you if you break your sword because you want to turn it into a... Into a the world then that's great right but that's not where we are right now in the timeline right, right. so if you have a broken soul and soul you're dead and you've died in bad in bad in bad in bad, 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 bad very miserable freaking freaking um so it, it's a it's it was a brilliant way i think of using the um nature metaphor of how nature is and how crazy it is and the contradiction that is nature, the beauty in it, but also the, the destructive element in it. You look at a lion, and it's beautiful, and it's majestic, and it's also a fucking killing machine. Mm -hmm. Or an ocean, the waves. Yeah. It'll yeah. break up against the side of a mountain. It'll it'll destroy a mountain over time. Yeah. And, and again, it's we march into the atrium of the storm. So you have to have kind of this, um, you know you, you got to have this sort of defensive posture as you're trying to find, eke out some existence in this right, world. It's, it's right, kind a of a of pessimistic warmth. way of looking at the world, but it's also extremely realistic. And and I, I you know, as I said in the other review, life is not always about being comfortable all the time. you mm -hmm. got to have to look at this stuff in the face. Mm -hmm. um, at the heart of the chaos in the deep below, aimlessly we wandered in our sleep. Come back to the silence to light the faded flame. Come break the silence. Yeah, come break the silence to light the faded flame. Sanctity where none should be found. A frail existence now head towards the wind, a speck of light adrift. Then when all we have awoken to is death that brought us life, a grain of sand and a crown. Um, a grain of sand would be... You know, again, if he's talking about, you know, human ingenuity or human, you know, warfare where you win mm -hmm. and you've now overtaken this land. But he's saying, yeah, but what is it in the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. but a grain of sand? Oh, wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That That's what it looks like to me. You have a grain of sand and a crown. Mm -hmm. Great. Congratulations. But you, you've, you've created all this chaos and all this destruction wow. over time and all these people... And now you get the crown, congratulations, and you've got this speck of a land, which if you look at it from the, you know, 30,000 uh, uh, feet view, it's like less than 
a grain of sand. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a it's a pretty cool way of talking about you know what have our all of our struggles and of our wars. What is it? What has it actually gotten us? You know what I'm saying? And so, um, I but sonically. And then it says, the endless storm will never cease to rage like dust adrift. We scatter across a realm without a name. When the cold autumn arises, sun dims and colors fade, bereft of life, the theft of time itself. Because the way that we've measured time is the sun. Mm-hmm. But one of these days, the sun will collapse in silence. Yep. For a world covered in snow. Like, if, if you know, I'm just inhabiting this guy's universe. One of these days, everything that we've been doing over time is going to be completely insignificant Mm -hmm. and the sun itself is going to go out and the 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 means by which we've been able to track time is going to disappear itself and then what uh it's kind of a nihilistic way of looking at the world but like i always say if the sky is empty they're completely 100 percent right um so it's like why can't we in this short sliver of time find a way to get along with each other yeah i'm saying yeah and uh not kill each other That'd be great. It'd be great if we could not kill each other. Um, so this part was crazy too. No man can stand unshattered in his grief. Crazy line. Yeah, yeah. That's that is a that is a good line. Um, and of course, sarcast. If 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 the now is everything, you have the kind of disposition that says then let's let's love each other and be mm. as good to each other as hard as we possibly can because all we have is now. Mm-hmm. And there's other people that are going to say, yeah, all we have is now, so all I'm going to do is is right. live my yeah. life to maximize my own happiness and fuck everybody else because we're going into heat death anyway. Right. Both, both of which are valid if the sky's empty. So mm-hmm. I get you. I'm glad. I- I'm glad that you have that, that view of the world, but not everybody has that view of the world. But... Over, but overall, though, I think he's he's looking he's looking at the the past, the present, and the future, and I'm not sure that the author of the song has necessarily come to a conclusion. But what I will tell you is, sonically, what that guy did on guitar, like the second, like he mm-hmm. completely took over the song in my from my vantage point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the second half, they slowed it down, went a little acoustic for a second, went a little folky for a second. And then the guy just took off and mm-hmm. said, watch this, guys. Mm-hmm. And basically told the story of the song from beginning, middle, and end with his instrument. And they just rode that to the end of the song, which I thought was brilliant. It's a 10 for me. It's my favorite song of the month. And I've, I've listened to a lot of really good songs this month. But it's my favorite song of the month for show, for show, for show, for show. Uh, 8.9 for me. What? Well, this this is not my, my style. You know, the vocal <laughs> what style. What did you give stuff. it? I gave it an 8.9. That's what I did. There you are, dear listener. Uh, this song's the tenth for me. Uh, Luminous night, you did not miss insomnium. It's in, insomnium is on the way. Mm. Having said that, dear listener, then out. Sorry, out. Gone.